So I'm here with Konstantinos Daskalakis, who has won the Nevelina Prize. Um, congratulations. Thank you very much. So how does it feel having won the prize? It's a great pleasure and honor uh, to be recognized. Yeah, so it's, it's a great experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, when we attended the press conference where you were also present, you mentioned that part of your work at least is concerned with um, combining mathematics with the study of human beings or with looking at humans. Could you expand on that? What did you yeah, mean by so, that? So my work is on the interface of uh, computer computational uh, theory, so uh, in, within computer science, and game theory. So game theory is the study of uh, mathematical behavior from a mathematical uh, perspective. And uh, within that theory, you're also interested in the um, how complicated it is for people to make decisions. So that falls in the realm of uh, computer science, which studies algorithms and computational complexity. So my work puts together this field of mathematics, so game theory, with um, algorithms, uh, which is a subfield of computer science. Now, one very interesting result you proved concerns um, the notion of equilibria in game theory, and in particular, something called the Nash equilibrium. Could you just give us a broad idea of what the Nash equilibrium is, please? Yeah, so the Nash equilibrium is a mathematical definition. Uh, it's an attempt to characterize how people would uh, strategically interact in a system. So the question is, you know, a system puts together some rules of behavior, and uh, when people interact within the system, they make decisions in response to other people's decisions. So what Nash equilibrium tries to capture is what will ultimately happen after people uh, uh, engage strategically with each other. So the precise mathematical definition is that the behavior would stabilize if uh, people, agents, strategic agents, arrive in a choice of strategies uh, uh, that is stable, meaning that uh, no player can improve their own uh, uh, payoff by updating unilaterally their strategy given what everyone else is doing. And uh, for instance, let me give an example. So when we all make decisions uh, in a road network as to uh, which route to choose to go from work to home, um, um, you know, we, 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 every day we optimize our route. Ultimately, you know, uh, the system arrives at equilibrium when uh, no driver can improve their uh, travel time by changing the routes. Nash equilibrium does not mean that uh, the situation is good. It could be that, you know, uh, you know, horrible traffic on the roads is the Nash equilibrium. But it is a Nash equilibrium which is stable. Nobody can improve uh, their experience by changing their strategy. So that's an example of an equilibrium. So Nash, the important result uh, that Nash proved is that such a thing always exists. It's always possible in a, in a strategic environment, no matter how complex it is, no matter how many agents it has, and how many strategies every its agent has, it's always possible for it to arrive at an equilibrium. It could be a good equilibrium for social welfare, it could be a bad equilibrium for social welfare, but certainly what Nash's theorem says is that uh, the system can stabilize. Now, my work uh, actually is a critique to that uh, uh, theorem uh, for, uh, coming from a computational perspective. What we show is that uh, equilibrium may exist, but it may not be attainable if you want to respect uh, computation. So it might be too hard to it, calculate it. Exactly. It is uh, computationally intractable. So in particular, agents, uh, you know, it, you, know, the, you know, the best supercomputers may not be able to actually find the equilibrium. And that uh, uh, theorem applies to games that we play, uh, it applies to road networks, it applies to markets. So in many very in many complex uh, systems, it may be computationally intractable for the system to figure out what is the stable operational mode. So it could be wandering uh, uh, around uh, the equilibrium or far away from the equilibrium without ever uh, being drawn to a stable uh, state. So um, Nash proved that an equilibrium always does exist, but it just might not be feasible, computationally feasible to find it. Exactly. So that's quite interesting because that's one example where something called a non-constructive proof, where the fact that it is non-constructive actually matters. Um, that's, that's right, yeah. So Nash's uh, theorem was uh, using Brouwer's Fixman theorem. And as we know, Brouwer's uh, Fixman theorem isn't constructive. There have been attempts at making a uh, fixed point computation and as a corollary Nash equilibrium computation also uh, constructive. 
However, these algorithms take uh, exponential time, meaning, uh, you know, if uh, the game involves, say, a hundred people, it may take uh, two to the hundred time to find the equilibrium. So uh, th this is the kind of situation where, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, exponential time is uh, problematic because two to the hundred is not an attainable uh, time. Uh, right? So what does that mean for us, for humans? The fact that this, like, this Nash equilibrium is not attainable? Possibly. Well, it means a few things. So if you're an analyst who is trying to predict what happens in a system, you better be careful uh, uh, if you're going to try to apply the Nash equilibrium. Uh, uh, a, you may not be able to find it because you may not have algorithms to compute it, but B, and that's even worse uh, from a philosophical standpoint, if the, computer, if the Nash equilibrium is intractable, then all bets are off as to whether the agents are going to get there. So both from as an analyst who's trying to compute the equilibrium to predict uh, it's problematic, but also uh, from the perspective of the agents who are interacting in the system, it may be frustrating when you cannot ever arrive at a stable operational mode. As a designer, what that tells you is that, so when you design a system, say you design a road network or you design a tax system or whatever, uh, an online market, uh, say, you know, like this new dating application or this new, uh, you know, uh, Uber application or whatever, so you better be careful that the, 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 the rules that you set uh, uh, inside your system um, do not uh, lead to a situation where our theorem applies. It should be that your system is clean enough, it has the right mathematical structure so that equilibria can actually arise easily uh, from the interaction of agents. Otherwise all bets are off. When you design a system, you want to optimize some objective. So for example, if you are designing a dating system, you want to make uh, the matchmaking process efficient. If you design an online market, you also want an efficient market. When you design an Uber application, you want drivers and riders to be happy. But uh, uh, this objective is going to ultimately uh, be realized only if agents are able to uh, interact in the system in the way that promotes that objective. Uh, uh, and and to, to get any kind of certificate when you design your system that this good objective is going to be promoted, it better be that two things are, are true. One is that agents are able to get to equilibrium and B, in equilibrium, the objective is promoted. Yes. Mm -hmm. So has your result <clears throat> has your result then sort of revolutionized the applied side of, of um, these kind of game theoretic considerations? Uh, so what it has uh, done is it has uh, shifted uh, attention towards uh, uh, either, as I said earlier, designing games uh, respecting uh, computation, so designing games so that equilibria are easy to find, or Analyzing uh, 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 whether the objectives are, are promoted, the good objectives are promoted, the desirable objectives are promoted or not, not under equilibrium, but also under the dynamical behavior that people may uh, have in the systems. Right. So mm. you have two options in some sense. So one option is design your system so that equilibria are easy to find, and the objective is promoted under equilibrium. The other objective is to you know forget about equilibrium and try to guarantee that your objective is promoted even under dynamical changing behavior of people in your system. Mm -hmm. So you have these two options and what our theorem has uh, sort of like uh, 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 inspired the community to do is to either make si systems easy, I mean with easy equilibria with good, uh, you know, promoting the objective or to even provide guarantees under dynamical behavior of agents inside a complicated system. Mm -hmm. Okay, now going back to a sort of philosophical angle, um, from your point of view, uh, as a kind of area of mathematics and computer science that you do, do you think that everybody should be a constructivist then? Do you think we should avoid non-constructive proofs in uh, mathematics? Yeah, uh, it depends on your goal. So, uh, so I'm a computer scientist by training and uh, also in fact an engineer by training. So for me, constructiveness is super important. Uh, it's hard to use, uh, yeah, I mean, unless the object has no, uh, you know, unless you, you have no goal in actually ever attaining that object, uh, you know, you should, you know, you should, you should, you know, uh, you know
know, try to come up uh, with constructive groups. More generally, what does it mean for your area and for your field that you have been awarded this prize? Uh, so it's, uh, you know, certainly like so prizes, you know, recognize uh, uh, a person, but, but also recognize a, a broader uh, uh, agenda in, in science. And, uh, uh, you know, in some sense, they, they give you, you know, like, uh, you know, audience to, uh, you know, describe your research and inspire other people. And, and that's, uh, um, you know, a, a big opportunity, but also a big responsibility. Well, congratulations again. Thank you very and much. And thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Thank you.